Well, this is being recorded literally the day after I put out Dawn Eternal. Um, as soon as I listened to that in my car, I was like, oh, it sounds too bright. I had literally just given it a master pass with Ozone 9, which I have up here. Um, like, right before I made the video, I was like, oh, I wish it had a little bit more high-end information. And then I regretted that. Um, I do kind of like the extra buzziness, but, like, I need to mix it better, I guess. But what I specifically noticed, I guess, um, whenever I was doing my own, like, critical listening of my Doom music attempt, was it still didn't quite sound as well produced. Um, but most of all, I there wasn't really much low-end information in mine, except in certain sections, um, which part of that is the Master Pass, as I mentioned, I think, the Master EQ that I did. The tracks that I was trying to emulate most significantly seems to have more low-end information, which is something I generally avoid, but it clearly seems useful to me now. So what I'm going to do here with this video is I'm going to take a look at a few examples of the Boom soundtrack with Ozone. Ozone happens to have a pretty cool plugin called the Imager, which lets you see the stereo information. But like, it'll actually show you in a radial graph um, how the sound information is distributed. And I figured it would be interesting to do some critical listening of Doom tracks. Um, and take some notes, really. Do some homework. First off, Trial of Malaga. Because that's the song that I really had in mind when I was recording Dawn Eternal. And so that was the one that I went back to afterward, and I was like, oh wow, this has so much more low-end inf information. Okay, so how to read this thing, I had to look up. <laughs> um, these two modes uh, aren't very different. They just show the information differently, but the reading of it is the same. Anything within these two lines, these 45 degree angles, so this, this 90 degree whole arc, um, it represents within information that's in phase. Um, anything past that represents information that's out of phase. I'm not 100% sure how to use that information, <laughs> but let's, let's just see what happens. So I'm noticing a lot of, um, out of phase information, which people out of phase I feel like a lot of people talk about it like it's a bad thing I don't think it is um, I mean of course down mixed to mono it can be a problem but so 
let's look at the low end information here. I noticed there's a lot of low end, and that's what I'm trying to make for my own thing. Um, and just so that we're clear, I have this soloed on the low end information. The vector scope does reflect what is soloed. It's not outputting the image of the whole song right now. Um, yeah, a lot of that's out of phase. Let's let's create a couple other bands and just like see what happens when we look at those. The really sub stuff is mostly centered. Yeah, I only get, we're only getting out of phase information past like 60K or is it 60K? No, it's just 60 Hertz. Yeah, that's definitely what I need. I need more... I need more information, like, below 300 hertz in my stuff, I think. Um, more useful information, at least. I wonder if I can isolate... Mick at least used a lot of synths. This track is by David Lovey, I think. Um, I'm wondering... Sp supposedly the synths are part of how you end up with that low-end information, which is part of why I included some synths in my thing. Let's move on to... What's this one? Meat Hook? I mean, might as well take a look. Take a look with the equalizer just to see. I'm noticing that right around 16k it cuts off. There's a significant drop in the waveform. Is it like that with, uh... Oh no, it's not. Andrew Holschult. Yeah, I... So, supposedly, the... Intro to this is actually by David Levy.
So there's a phenomenon known as upward masking where low, lower frequencies can make it harder to hear higher frequencies. Um, I'm not sure if that's just like if they build up or just their existence period. I need to do more research on that. But, uh, I mean, just listen to how much fatter that sounds whenever you put the high-end information in. Or low-end. We're gonna take a look now at The Only Thing They Fear Is You by Mick Gordon, which is the one that everyone knows. Oh, whoops. So far I'm surprised to note that the vector scope is showing mostly centered information, which like I didn't hear a lot of panned information, but um... That's interesting. So, without the low end, at least on this, you get a lot of, a lot more out of phase information. I wonder why. This happens to be a pretty cool opportunity to look at, because this part has a lot more distinct mixing, I guess, or at least panning mixing. Um, you can actually hear where things are on the vector scope. Like seeing that pan visually is interesting. Um, all right. I also put Vegacore in here, because um, this one's notably more like club sounding, so I wanted to see if it showed up distinctly different in any way. Um, let's take a look. So something I'm noticing whenever I was moving that around that I thought was interesting is uh, the song, like, you can clearly tell I'm cutting EQ there, but uh, it didn't sound very different. Let's see what happens with a different one. We'll go back to Blood Swamps.
so I suppose it's a it's well mixed in that regard. Um, I just want the basic UI to back. So now I'm going to take a look at my track, which, uh, looking at the waveforms, I'm glad to see that it doesn't. They clearly, all these guys, clearly either mix or are mastered louder. Um, I guess they mix louder? I don't know. That's something I've noticed about all of the Doom songs. They just are loud. Um, and it's good. I like it. It makes me wonder if I should mix louder. Um, or master louder, at least. Yeah, I wonder what these are peaking at. Or what's the RMS? I should take What's... Oh, I don't know. Ah! Yeah, RMS negative five for that one. I have six, negative seven, negative five. Yeah, okay. So now let's take a look at my track. I seem to be within like a similar volume range. See, I have like, I guess, almost no lower stereo information. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the equalizer and I'm going to make some adjustments and see what happens here. So I was noticing that the sub bass on a lot of these tracks was going up to like at least negative 20. So I'm going to start with that. Oh, yeah. 
Because this feels so much more... Yeah, wow, that just feels a lot less flat. All right, that's cool. Um, now nah, it's definitely not going to end up being like the new master of it, but that does give me some direction, which is good. Um, cool. I guess this is this homework is done. Um, Yeah, we'll see whatever I go from here. Oh, that's not, there you go.